Good afternoon. I'm going to take you through the treatment of malabsorption. And uh, when you are treating malabsorption, usually our medical care is the mainstay. And the basic principles of treatment of these children is, is um, correction of the nutritional deficiencies that they get and treating the underlying cause. But ultimately, dietary adjustment is the primary form of therapy in most of these malabsorptive syndrome. So, um, under the medical care, we have um, several things that we could do. One, we could um, replace the pancreatic enzymes or whatever enzyme is missing. For example, in lactase, in lactose intolerance, you can replace the lactase enzyme. Uh, you can use antibiotics as well during management of these children. There are some immunosuppressive medications that can be used, especially if you have an autoimmune enteropathy. And then also part of their management is um, eliminating the, the cause, which is uh, the malabsorbed substance that is causing the malabsorption. So um, in cases of like lactose intolerance, which is the commonest carbohydrate malabsorption that you would get, um, the major treatment would involve dietary adjustment, which is um, eliminating lactose from their diet. So you want to ensure that they're on a lactose-free meal so that you can control their, their symptoms, the diarrhea mainly. And then uh, you want to advise these patients to reduce or restrict um, products that contain lactose, so mainly dairy products, and give them alternatives. Um, they can use prehydrolyzed milk, which is available and can, can be taken to reduce on the symptoms as well. I think like yogurt and fermented products can also be used in people who are lactose intolerant and soy-based milk. And this is basically dietary. Eliminate the lactose and the symptoms will resolve. And um, of course, you need to do uh, the micronutrient supplementations. For example, these people have cut out all the dairy in their, in their diet, so they tend to be deficient of calcium. So with lactose intolerance, it's important to supplement them with calcium. And then um, in case of secondary lactose deficiency, then you're going to have to treat the underlying cause, wherever it is, is it chronic diarrhea, is it chronic infection, HIV, so manage that. And then in cases of fat intolerance, um, they are, they can, they've said that you can give them um, medium chain triglyceride oil, especially people who have fat malabsorption, who have poor weight gain. So this, is, uh, this can be used in their management because this doesn't undergo the traditional fat metabolism and absorption is directly absorbed into the enterocyte. So this can help them weight, gain weight much quicker. And then it's important to also supplement them with the vitamin deficiencies, the A, D, and E, and K, now that are needed to be absorbed in with fat. So if they are fat intolerant and they're not absorbing their fat, you need to supplement them with these vitamins as well. And, and it's important when you're managing with them, anyone with malabsorption, they're going to present with several features, malnutrition, they can be, dehyd can be dehydrated, they can have all these micronutrient deficiencies which you're going to look out for and manage. So um, manage the malnutrition, increase their caloric intake, they are replace their protein uh, in the micronutrient deficiencies, identify them and supplement them, supplement them with the various minerals, whatever it is, calcium, magnesium, iron, all the vitamins, um, supplement them. And then in cases of um, severe intestinal disease, for example, they had a massive resection or they have extensive regional enteritis and they can't tolerate enterophytes, then you can give them parenteral nutrition as well to supplement them, to feed them. Then, um, in terms of drugs, medication, um, like I said earlier, that antibiotics can be, uh, can have a role in their management, because they get, um, sometimes they can get infectious diarrhea, and also with uh, malabsorption, they tend to get bacterial overgrowth, which can also worsen the diarrhea. So you need to cover them with antibiotics, which can be broad spectrum, and then you also, also want to cover the anaerobes as well. So you prescribe your antibiotic depending, but you want to treat the bacterial overgrowth, which can ultimately worsen the diarrhea as well. Then the enzymes as well can be prescribed. Uh, Pancreatic which can contain lipase, protease, amylase. This will help with the breakdown of these 
nutrients, carbohydrate, protein, fats, to ease the absorption. So you can also prescribe them if they are available to you. And then uh, there are also some bile acid binding agents that can be used, and these are mainly used if you have bile acid malabsorption syndromes. You can prescribe some of these things to reduce on the symptom, which is mainly diarrhea really. And surgery, sometimes the surgical care can help, especially in children who are refractory to the enteral feeding. You've tried the oral feeds and they are not improving or they're in the end stage of this whole syndrome. And they say uh, surgery is an option. You may consider a gut transplant, liver transplant. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever setting you'll be in, you can consider a <laughs> transplantation for these children. Yes, um, and of course, never forget to look out for the underlying cause. Always read the underlying cause. Thank you. <laughs>